is the normal cell with microvilli and here the microvilli are lost and there is bleb formation. So this is a typical electron microscopy of reversible cell injury. You can also see here this is what is called as pinching of endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, what is this called? Pinching of endoplasmic reticulum. So actually this is cause said to be the main mechanism behind the hydropic change. So whenever the water, excess water comes into the cytoplasm, okay, this starts causing pinching of endoplasmic reticulum that causes lot of hydropic change and that is why cell appears very uh, hydropic or uh, ballooned out, okay. So that's the main mechanism behind, you know, hydropic change if somebody asks you, okay. So that's your reversible cell injury, okay. Okay, now look at this. So everybody should identify this organelle. This has crystal in it. So this is normal microvilli which everybody should know. Okay, but look at this cell. What is happening here to the mitochondria? The mitochondria instead of sleek. Okay, so this is like a tall and a slim girl and this is like a round and a fat girl. Okay, so if somebody becomes like a balloon. Okay, so uh, this is what is this is typically called at caused a swelling of mitochondria. So imagine in your uh, mind, okay, so I will not talk about girls, I will talk about boys, okay. So this is tall uh, and thin boy and this is a fat and obese boy, okay. So uh, this here, this is a mitochondria which is, you know, rounded like a ball. So that's swollen mitochondria, okay, and that's very typical of reversible cell injury. But if you start seeing amorphous densities in this, okay, like this, then it becomes a reversible cell injury, okay. So, for reversible injury, it is just swollen, okay, big fat, okay, swollen mitochondria. But if you start seeing densities inside that, that's irreversible. That means that's all. Now, he's going to die, okay. So, that's your mitochondria, okay. Now, I'm going to talk to some, about some image here. So, anybody who can tell me what is this? Yes, what is this? This is your mitochondria. This is a cell with mitochondria, a lot of mitochondria stuff together. So whenever the, any cell starts acquiring a lot of mitochondria or whenever a cell has a lot of mitochondria in it, such cells are called oncocytes. What are these cells called? Oncocytes. Okay, so oncocytes are those cells which have a lot of mitochondria in them. Okay, so the organs which require a lot of energy have oncocytes. Okay, so especially like muscle. Okay, these uh, cells have a lot of oncocytes. Okay, they can have oncocytes. But what are we concerned with? Pathology, isn't it? So whenever a cell has a lot of oncocytes, such cells, because oncocytes, mitochondria are present in the cytoplasm, so whenever cells have a lot of oncocytes, these cells start acquiring abundant pink cytoplasm. So let's look at the image of it. Okay, so can you see, look at these? So these, uh, this is a cell, okay? This is a cell and it has acquired abundant pink cytoplasm. So that's what catches your eye, why this cell has so much cytoplasm. So such cells which have abundant pink cytoplasm are called oncocytes or they are also called as Ascansi cell. Okay, so what are the other name of these cells? These cells are also called as Ascansi cells, okay. So, they are, that's the other name for oncocytes. They are called Ascansi cells. So, oncocytes or Ascansi cells. Now, you should be very clear with it, okay. So, these are oncocytes or they are Ascansi cells, okay. So, that has to be very clear to you, okay. So, these are your oncocytes, okay. So, where all, which are the pathological conditions where you should be concerned with oncocytes? See, the, remember one more point here. So, oncocyte, okay, excessive of oncocytes can be seen in a tumor called as oncocytoma, which can be seen in various organs like, uh, uh, like salivary gland or kidney. So, oncocytoma of kidney is very, very important image based question that can be asked to you because here in oncocytoma kidney, you see a typical central scar, okay, that's very, very classical and it is confused with chromophobe RCC. So, that's very classical. The second thing that you have to know is uh, in thyroid, okay, so these oncocytes are called as Herthal cells, okay. So, in thyroid, these oncocytes are called as Herthal cells. So, there is a, so here, so whenever they are called Herthal cells, so here, 
we can have two conditions which we should remember. One is Hashimoto thyroiditis. Okay. And second is Herthel cell neoplasms. Herthel cell neoplasms. So, for your point of point, point of view, for an undergraduate level, Hashimoto thyroiditis is one of the favorite question of examiners. Okay. So, remember, whenever I'm talking about oncocytic rich cells, remember oncocytoma kidney and Hashimoto thyroiditis. So, let me show you the images of both of them. Okay, so look at this kidney. There is a central scar in this kidney. Okay, and it, this has a typical mahogany brown color. Look at the color here. Okay, so that's the color which you get in the kidney with oncocytoma. This is a mahogany brown color with a central scar. With a central scar. That's a very, very typical tumor. That's oncocytoma kidney. Okay, so remember this is usually confused with chromophobe RCC and you have to know this, okay. And it appears like a ball-like lesion in the kidney. So you can identify this because it's a very circumscribed mass and you can identify it well, okay. In thyroid, look at this image. It came in your AIMS 2016 exam also. Here you are seeing a lot of pink color cells. Can you see these cells now? Now you'll be able to identify these cells as Herthel cells. Apart from Herthel cells, you are seeing a follicle formation here, isn't it? So, you can see a follicle formation here, okay? So, everybody can see a follicle formation and this follicle, this is a basic follicle and here we have a germinal center, okay? So, even germinal center is formed, okay? So, there is lot of inflammation, okay? And there is lot of Herthel cells. So, this typically occurs in Hashimoto. So, Hashimoto is an autoimmune disease and here a person has antibodies, okay? So, anti-thyroid peroxidase antibody or anti-thyroglobulin antibody, okay. So, Hashimoto thyroiditis have anti-TPO or anti-thyroglobulin antibodies and they cause injury to the uh, cells and they can cause uh, Herthel cell change, okay. They can cause Herthel cell change, okay. So, everybody should be very clear with this. Here is one point of wisdom that I want to tell you, although you would have studied in your surgery, Graves disease, okay. So, it's Graves disease is a type of uh, hyperthyroidism. So, it is also an autoimmune disease. So, please remember Graves disease can also have these antibodies, but along with that they have anti-TSH antibodies. Okay, so these anti-TSH antibodies are unique to Graves. Okay, so this Graves disease can have anti-TPO and anti-thyroglobulin antibodies also, but it also has anti-TSH antibody. Anti-TSH antibodies are not present in Hashimoto. Okay, that's the difference. Okay, so uh, remember this point always. Okay, so Graves disease has anti-TSH antibody, whereas Hashimoto has anti-TPO, anti-thyroglobulin antibodies to be unique. They don't have anti-TSH antibodies and microscopy of Hashi is very classical. So, they have Herthel cells with lot of follicle formation with germinal centers and lots of injury going on, okay. Therefore, you not, whenever we see this kind of microscopy, we suspect Hashi, but we also ask them to get antibody testing done because antibody is a must to label it as Hashimoto. You all know Hashimoto has an initial phase of hyperthyroidism and then patient becomes hypothyroid, okay. So, that's a top, typical history they give. Earlier he was, uh, she was, it's usually autoimmune disease more in females. So, initially the female is hyperthyroid and then she becomes hypo thyroid. So, that's a typical history of Hashi. Remember again one point here, Hashimoto thyroiditis typically most commonly develops papillary carcinoma of kid, uh, papillary carcinoma of thyroid, but it can also because you know this Herthel cells are injured cells, so they develop papillary carcinoma. But also there are a lot of lymphoid follicles, therefore it is also prone to develop maltoma. So, there are two cancers which are very common in Hashi, okay, papillary carcinoma and uh, and maltoma, which is more common if somebody asks you, papillary is more common than maltoma, okay. So, papillary is more common than maltoma. So, that is your Hashimoto thyroiditis, which you should remember. In grave disease, the microscopy that you typically see is, you see 
scalloping of colloid okay so usually skin is uh, colloid which is undergoing scalloping so you see a lot of hyperactivity patient is having a typical signs of hyperactivity scalloping of colloid so then you order for anti tsh antibodies which are typically present in graves disease okay so scalloping of colloid okay that is usually seen in graves disease right okay so remember this so hashi okay so these are uh, Oh, all your oncocytic changes which you should remember so this was an important high yield topic which i told you here so this came from your mitochondria remember that so we because this is a revision module so we should discuss all the tentative questions that can be asked to you in exams and we should not confuse any one of them okay right so can you answer this question now so cloudy swelling of the cell is due to so everybody knows cloudy swelling is nothing but it is ballooning or hydropic change and it is because of accumulation of water intercellularly so everybody should know the cell okay so it becomes very very clear okay very hydropic okay so that is what is called hydropic change of the cell that's what is called hydropic change of the cell that should be very clear also remember this image that they can give you an exam these are myelin figures which are nothing but phospholipid whorls and this can be seen only on electron microscopy so remember whorls when i am talking about okay so whorls can be seen on h and d okay on the light microscopy or it can be seen on electron microscopy if you are seeing on electron microscopy it is myelin figures okay if you are seeing a very well defined concentric whorls on h and e this is what is called samoma bodies okay which is nothing but a type of dystrophic calcification so on the light microscopy if you are seeing the whorls it is your samoma bodies if you are seeing on electron microscopy it is your phospholipid whorls that is myelin figures also remember squamous cell carcinomas can show you very ill defined whorls like this what are they called like this and in between the center there is a pink color material so this pink color material inside is keratin and the cells which are whirling around are pearls so these are called keratin pearls what are they called keratin pearls so whenever you see keratin pearls in squamous cell carcinoma it is a feature of well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma so differentiation so keratin pearls just show you differentiation so whenever you see pearls on squamous cell carcinoma that means it's a well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma so this is two points you have to remember samoma bodies and keratin pearls so let us look at the images of the pearls also so that we are very clear with the images right okay so look at these two images here when you, first image which you are seeing here okay can you see here that there are concentric whorls but there is some basophilic material which is center it's having a little bit of blue color so remember cal calcium whenever i am talking about calcium it is usually a amorphous blue color okay it gives you a basophilic okay bluish purple color basically so whenever you are seeing a whorl made up of little bluish color or a very well defined whorls like this something that has been cut like a tree bark which has been cut so that is your samoma body samoma body is a calcium so it gives you a bluish tinge whereas look at this okay so here there is a pink material in the center that is keratin in the center some of the time you can even see you know broken up nucleus in the center and around that there are whorls like this okay so like this so you can see the pink material in the center and around that there are irregular whorls and you can even see malignant cells okay cells with uh, which have they, they are having lot of polymorphisms okay so malignant cells around it so this is what is and they have you know they can vary in size they can be very small they can be very big okay so these these are your keratin pearls these are your keratin pearls so on your low power okay so everybody should be able to identify a samoma body which is a type of dystrophic calcification you which everybody i hope remembers can be seen in your papillary carcinomas of thyroid okay any papillary carcinoma of the body okay so papillary carcinoma of thyroid papillary carcinoma of kidney papillary carcinoma of ovaries called as serous tumors it can be seen in meningiomas okay it can be seen in meningiomas it can be seen in prolactinomas okay it can be seen in glucagonomas okay so it 
it can be seen in various tumors of the body wherever there is dystrophic calcification whereas keratin pearls always indicate well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma so it should be very very clear about it okay so that is your difference between all the worlds that you see in pathology okay right clear